Hi, this is Omai from Spitfire Audio, and I'm really happy to be able to present to you Albion Colossus. This one is especially exciting to us because it's the very first time that we have an Albion in our own plugin engine. And as with the other Albions, the team has carefully curated a themed all-in-one toolkit with the essence of this one being all about big sounds, modern epic cinema and trailer music, so you can think big battlefields, Hollywood blockbusters and apocalyptic end of the world. What makes this one different from the other big libraries that we have already are three completely new controllers and there's a big focus on the production of the orchestral sounds after the session to really push the intensity of the sound themselves further. But big sounds are often very effective in contrast to more detailed and intimate sounds, so the light and shade between the dynamic shifts, if you think about the tension scene before the big hitting moments. And to create that, we've actually made our biggest Albion yet with not one, but two different sized orchestras and the three controllers being depth, scale, and hype. So let's have a look at hype first, because that one is my favorite to play with. I love coming in from a really quiet place and then absolutely just blow up the horns with the hype fader. It just gives you so much more grit and density and saturation and everything that has been applied to this to create that specific sound. And that is something that has been applied throughout the whole orchestra and all the individual instruments within this library to really just make it bespoke to each sound. On the left hand side you have your usual suspects with the expression and then dynamics fader, so expression being your volume and dynamics being dynamics but also affecting your timbre of the instruments. And on the right hand side next to the dial you have scale here and then depth. Let's take scale for example. This is where we're looking at the two different sized orchestras. So at the very bottom you get a chamber sized orchestra and if you dial it up all the way to the top you have symphonic sized orchestra. Both have been recorded at the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall, with the chamber sized being in the new auditorium and the symphonic sized one was in the main concert hall. So you can really hear how it grows in scale and it is quite aperture-like but what we've not done before is separating between scale and depth. So if we look at depth all the way to the bottom you get a very close mix, opens up to a super wide one. Down here you have basically microphones sitting on the instruments as dry as we could possibly do it, opening up to two different trees further to ambient and then outrigger microphones. And this has been specifically created to really make that mixing stage a lot simpler for the user. So you have it all on one simple fader. Let's try this one on the shorts with chamber. And then this phonic. It really helps you putting things in different spaces. And I think the beautiful thing is that you can you can either do it whilst you're writing or you can just set it to a certain, say for example, tree and ambient around here and decide on the size of the orchestra that you want to use and then go from there and just leave it as it is. Let's try this on the legato. So if I dial in a little bit of the tree and ambient mic and 
Groß und Saal in some Hype. Another thing I find really useful in here is that you get legatos pretty much with every patch of the orchestra as well, which is really cool to have. But not only one legato, but basically two of everything. You have a symphonic sized legato and then also the chamber strings legato. And I find them actually incredibly agile. Let's dial down the hype a little bit on this. So here you get a lot more of the detail of this library with everything down. And by the way, if you're looking for specific sections within this library, you can check out the description and it should tell you where the different chapters are. With that in mind, let's look at the rest of the GUI layout. We have here Hype, Timing, Release, Filter, Compression and Reverb, with Hype being the default option as a first one for your big dial over here. If you want to have a more detailed look at all the different effects here, we have an even nerdier manual online for you to check out. Let's not forget the drop down menu over here. We have combinations patch, which is basically a collection of our favorite patches going through low strings, high strings, brass, horns, woodwinds. We have flutes individually, piccolos, percussion, drums, guitars and synths. Let's go through the patches starting again with low strings. I just find them really satisfying to play, especially the legatos. Really loving the rumble of the strings here. Let's try the short spiccato. Again with dialing it all the way down. And maybe just a symphonic again. just so many different sounds you can get from just these three different dials. Here we have a patch called hairpins. These are really natural waves of a note. Again, that's with the hype up, so you get that extra low end uh, dialed in too, as a comparison if I put it all the way down. Instantly has a different feel to it. Let's try some of the additional longs, our classic flautando. which usually we use as our really soft, lovely patch, but I love putting hype on here because it's just really dirty set up. But if you want to, you can go all the way down. So let's turn off the hype and Let's have more chamber. Which I think is a really nice alternative to our chamber strings as well. Some tremolos. One thing I want to mention is that if you want to use hype, you want to keep it at 10%. It will start kicking in from then onwards. Here we have our additional shorts. I want to play to you the Bartok Pizzicato. I think they're really cool, especially if you turn on the symphonic strings and also have the hype button up.
I think that could be really cool to accent certain moments. Equally, the colenos, I think, are really nice. Really because of especially having the high uh, fader giving you all this low end too. Moving on to our high strings, maybe I have a little bit of tree and ambient here and keeping it further down to chamber strings. Can also add a little bit of reverb. Maybe that also with the hype fader up. But something that I really love is that you can obviously also play with expression and dynamics at the same time. So you can have the functions and the sound of the hype fader, but keep it all at a lower level too. Let's see what this sounds like with the shorts. Maybe I'll try a little mix here. Let's have to mix around here. Maybe some phonic. With hype. Even at a higher point, I feel they have some really nice definition to them. Let's try the high happens. Here's a longer one. Some high add longs. Let's try the Fortando and let's try dialing everything in slowly. It's just such a huge distance you can push these sounds to. I want to try that on tremolo too. Pretty intense. Um, moving on to the shorts. I'll dial this one up again, but I'll keep the depth in place. Again, just doing that throughout your piece can really help making it grow and push along. Yes, yeah, so a big shout out to the team who've done an incredible job making this also fluid to which are basically five different levels that you can manipulate. All right, let's look at our brass. It's divided into two sections. So we have brass and horns here. Let's look at brass first. If we take the chamber size ones, you have here one tuba and two euphoniums. And if you're dialed all the way up, you have six trombones, two bass trombones, one contra bass trombone, two tubas, and three chimbasos. And something I really love doing with this one in particular is dialing a combination of the new effects all together. So I actually just linked it all up to one fader. I 
absolutely love being able to use one fader and go from a really small place to just make it absolutely huge. Let's try that with the legato. Moving on to the shorts, again also wanting to give you the scale and hype on the shorts, which I think sound really amazing. And then just into symphonic. Together with hype. Really give you that power there. The same one happens. Moving on to horns, we have three in the chamber sized orchestra and then we have eight in the symphonic sized one. So let's start with the chamber one. And to refer back to the light and shade, again, you can go really soft with these ones. And then dial it up. Here we have some legatos. Here with the longs. and some horn shorts. I also really like the Makatas actually. And also some horn happens. Moving on, we have some really lovely woodwind section here, which I actually divided into woodwinds, flutes, and piccolos. If we go with the first one at the top here, some woodwinds longs, we have in the chamber section one oboe, one bass clarinet, one contra bass clarinet, and one contra bassoon. And in the symphony section, we have three oboes, two bass clarinets, two contrabass clarinets, one contrabassoon, and then we also have tenor sax and contrabass sax. Just to give you the whole range. I absolutely love the hype effect on this one. Really love that sound. Let's try that with the shorts, maybe in between with everything. A little bit of hype. Staccatos. Definitely want to try it up with the hype. But again, if you want to just bring it down and have it a lot more intimate and up close. I think it sounds really lovely. We also have some hairpins on those. With the fader up. 
quite intense. Um, let's have a look at the flutes. With the symphony size. Feel really agile as well here. Then we have some flute shots. And with hype. Also some hairpins. Here's some piccolo, so I'm going to try that on the legato. Chamber sized. And then symphonic with hype. I mean, if your piccolo didn't come through before, it definitely will now. Then we also have some shorts. Symphonic. And with hype. And lastly in that section, the hairpins. Especially at the end, you have that really natural vibrato on those piccolos, which are really beautiful. Next up, we have the percussion section. Let's check out the concert percussions. You have them doubled up over a couple of octaves, so you can have a better playability with them. That's with the chamber size, if we go symphonic. And then hype on this one. Whoa. Mega. And timpanis. And then up. And with hype as well. Here's a traditional kit, which I think sounds really lovely. And then also with hype. Next up, we have a really fun one. This one is called Junkyard Kit. So there's a lot of scraps and metal bits and plates that have been hit and used for this one. I'll just add the scale fader throughout, including the hype. Definitely really useful for some builds. An intense moment. Then we also have some tuned percussions, which I always find really useful. Also really love the vibraphone sustained. Then we also have a classic drum kit. Let's try that one with the hype. So far you've heard all the acoustic percussion and drums, but for the last section we have a really special patch which was created and produced by 
Snakes of Russia, who's an incredible producer, who's really manipulated all the sounds of these drums. So I created a little loop here that I'm going to play around and I'll just cycle through some of the different sounds that he put together. That's not even using the hype. So let's have another look putting that up as well. He didn't only work on the jumps for us, he also put some really incredible synth sounds together. So let's have a look at synth bass. Getting absolutely massive. Cages. Creeper bass. Diggers. One of my favorite ones is Bass for Cutie. But we also have some really great other ones. And again, you can make them a lot smaller. Let's look at the drones. Let's have a look at Yasferasu. Really nice to build with. And then we also have some keys here. Again, even with the synths, you have the tightness all the way down with the faders, but then it sort of really opens up as soon as you put the faders up. Let's try out little fangs. Mm -hmm. 
that's probably one of my favorite ones too and maybe one more Here we also have some synth leads. Dwight. room they grow absolutely huge and then on lines maybe as well love how the sounds transform and then lastly in the synth section we have some pads Let's try one more. Let's check out Danger Beach. For the last section of this library, we've worked with a really special guitarist called John Brown, who has tracked his guitar three times through three amps when you look at the bottom of the scale fader. And if you fade it all the way up, he's tracked it six times through six amps. Here we have some longs. Again, absolutely massive. These ones I have already played with and I think they're really cool because they just give you that extra definition or that extra drive, that extra attack on some of the steps that I've written for a piece. Okay, let's have a look at the last patch, which is guitar effects. One of my favorites is actually Dead Notes, which is super short. And then again, if we just boost it. To do it that short is meant to be actually incredibly hard to play. There's one last technique that I want to play, which I've already found useful, it's called Dive Bomb. And I actually use that as sort of an embellishment to help me transition from one scene to the next. That's pretty much it. If you want any more info on this library, we have a lot more manuals and demos on the website for you to check out. But thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you on the next one.